What people need to know is, one, the difference between the two kinds of tsunamis that we have. We have tsunamis that are created locally and preceded by a really big earthquake. Those are really bad. And we have tsunamis that are created by earthquakes happening somewhere else on the Pacific Rim. And those aren't bad. You need to know the difference between the two of those. The second thing is where the danger zones are in each of these two scenarios. The local scenario and the distance scenario is a difference between where the danger zones are. The third thing you need to know is how to reconnect with your loved ones, again, after each of the two scenarios. The difference between the local event and the distant event. But it's also the number one challenge to my education is to get people to separate out that there are two scenarios, local and distant. What we tend to do is collapse those two into one scenario. Um, the local event means the local earthquake. It's the big one. This will be five minutes of earth shaking, 9.0 subduction zone earthquakes like they had in Valdez in Alaska in 1964. The, that will be very scary. That is a very long earthquake, five minutes. Uh, the Loma Prieta quake in, in Oakland where the um, bridges collapsed on each other was about 35 seconds. We're talking five minutes. This won't be, honey, was that an earthquake? This will be, honey, when is it gonna stop? That's our warning. Don't need a siren to tell you you just went through five minutes of the earth shaking. Um, what that means that as soon as the earth stops shaking, you've got about 20 to 30 minutes before a series of 60 to 90 foot tsunami trains start coming on shore. That's pretty serious, okay? Survivors get above 60 feet before the tsunamis get here um, and basically be prepared to stay there for one to two weeks before people come to help us. Um, this is a major coast as well as Willamette Valley catastrophe. And we've just been through five of these in the last 1,400 years. And so that's a recurrence interval average of 280 years. The last event that we had was in 1700. That's 309 years ago now. So we're 309 years into a three to 500 year recurrence interval event. We are well within the window of this happening again. It could also happen in another 100 years. It could happen in 500 years. So, whether the big one happens in our lifetime or not, we need to be aware that it's happened here in the past regularly. It will happen again, and it's just a matter of whether it's something we deal with or our children or our grandchildren deal with. The distant events, or the little ones, they happen all the time because any earthquake anywhere on the Pacific Rim can send us a tsunami. And our technology is getting so good now that we can detect you know, millimeter high tsunami waves coming from earthquakes in Japan. Um, these will happen a, a size enough that will trigger the alarms probably two or three more times in my career. I mean, maybe 15 years maybe um, that kind of event happens. And this is the ones that we get a warning about where on TV or the sirens or your all hazards radio will kick in and say, ah, an earthquake has happened somewhere else. It will take a number of hours for it to get here and the waves will be not so big. Think bad winter storm at high tide. So we've got the big one once in a while and we've got the little ones much more frequently. The little ones are the ones we're gonna experience most frequently, but people are gonna think it's the big one. So part of the training and education of people is to really make a distinction between those two scenarios and to really understand that the siren doesn't mean you've got 30 minutes before 60 to 90 foot tsunami trains come. Sirens mean find out more information. Something has happened somewhere else. There will be hours before anything gets here. It will probably be such a small wave that you won't need to go anywhere unless you're on the beach um, or near a waterway. The first thing you need to know is the difference between local and distant. You just found out why. One is a catastrophe, one is a hassle, and we need to really get that uh, straightened out. The second thing you need to know is where is it safe and where is it less safe to be? Whenever anybody asks you a question about tsunamis, you have to get clarity from them. Do you mean the big one or do you mean the distant ones? And so for danger zones, in the big one, the local event where the earthquake is our warning, basically any place that's dangerous is below 50 or 60 feet. Um, the actual inundations that you see on maps are best thinking, best estimates. There's a lot of variation based on the landscape and the underwater landscape. 
Um, also it depends if it's high tide, low tide, and if it's a bad winter storm going on, that will all influence things. Keep going. I mean, if you're running and you're getting to a certain height and you can keep going, well, don't stop. So where are the danger zones in the local event? Anywhere below 50 or 60 feet. Um, you will not be able to drive your car uh, after this event, not because I don't like cars, but consider it's probably in a garage with an electric garage door opener that won't have any power to open it. If you even were to try it manually, after five minutes of earthquaking, your house will have shifted so much, your garage door won't open on the rollers. If you could get the garage door open, you have a tree falling down at the end of your driveway. If you could get past the driveway, you'll come to the bridge at the end of the block that is not safe to go over. You've now wasted 15 minutes messing around with your vehicle, when if you would have been in your bunny slippers heading for the hills, you'd probably be there by now. So that's why people say don't take your cars when? During the big one. Why? Because it's wasting your time on a, on a, a doomed strategy. Distant events. Where are the danger zones? In 1964, there was a 9.0 earthquake in Alaska. That's a big earthquake, relatively close. In three to four hours, waves came up on the beach and See, there were some places that had limited local damage in Seaside, for example, and it, unfortunately, um, people died sleeping on the beach in Newport, and of course, Crescent City, California always kind of gets bad tsunamis there due to their local circumstances. What are the reconnecting and communication strategies for the local? What do you have to prepare for? No phone, no power, no transportation. That's bad. Um, so as far as your family goes, or for agencies or organizations you work with, need to settle, to sit down and have a conversation about if the big one happens, when it happens, if we're around then, what would you do? What would you do? What would you do? And just get people thinking about, well, I would do this, I would do that, or the other. If you've talked through it once, you know what people are likely to do. We tend to think we're going to all be sitting around the house at uh, dinner time and the whole family is going to be together in the house far more likely that mom will be one place, dad will be another place, and the kids will be somewhere else. Won't it be reassuring to know that you had a conversation with your loved ones about if this happens, you know what they're going to do. If you are isolated from your family, to know that people know to get safe, stay safe, and then reconnect hours, days, weeks after the event. Much better to find somebody after a week that you both did the right thing and got safe than to have one person going into a dangerous zone looking for the other person because they didn't know what they were going to do. Um, that's the kind of thinking we need to go through for the communication strategy for the local event. Now, one thing that's interesting to note about the local event is there will likely be no power and no phones, and that includes cell phones because those towers will fall down. Try texting. Apparently there's a different technology with texting and sometimes text messages get through when phones do not especially during storms and stuff like that, we found out. Also, a lot of cars now have the OnStar communication phones. Those are satellite phones. The, one, the other thing for families to think about is if you have a grandma in Ohio, for example, and you've got all your family members knowing to call grandma in Ohio as soon as they can, at least there's a single point of contact that you can be in communication with. Don't choose someone in Portland, because for the local event, Portland is going to be having all kinds of its own troubles outside of the region. The distant events are the ones we're probably going to have to deal with most frequently in our lives, and they're really much more of a hassle than a danger. Cell phones will work, there's been no earthquake, power should be fine, everything will be good, and I can't get service on my cell phone on Mother's Day, you know, in the morning, because so many people are using the phone. We need to expect that will be the case during even a distant event warnings. Um, try a landline, again, sat phones, text message, those kind of things. The basic Communication and reconnecting strategy during a distant event is say the family is spread out on the daily activities. The basic calculation for the distant event is how am I going to deal with crazy people for the next 12 hours? Because people, that, that's how long you have to stay away from the beach and people will be confusing the two events and even though it's a distant event, they're going to think they're going to be in grave danger and they're going to start behaving like it. So for communicating and reconnecting, my biggest paradigm is expecting there to be a lot of confusion and I don't know that I want to just drive home. I may choose to stay at some neighbors or wherever, a work associate, wherever I'm near, let the dust settle and then come back home tomorrow. 
So under both of the two scenarios, you might not be able to reconnect with your loved ones. And so again, have that conversation now so at least you know what the others are thinking.